Well, thank you. You might be noticing more now hiring signs around the valley. I got to tell you, the businesses are struggling to hire and keep employees. CBS 2's Emery Moore gets to the bottom of the worker shortage. Yeah, it's really hard to find people that can work the hours that we need and people that are willing to work the hours that we need. It's, uh, yeah, it's sparse pickings out there. Manager McKenna Mann at Zero Six Coffee Fix says the pandemic may be making people hesitant to apply to work at the coffee shop. In a normal world, they would come to work and be excited to work for us, but... In Eagle, fine dining restaurant Baquet is also struggling to keep up with the demand of customers due to limited staff. Owner Michelle Baquet is even thinking about making sacrifices that would hurt her business even more. What we're doing now to deal with limited staffing, we're already considering shutting down on Sundays, which has been a great day for us because there's not very many other Eagle restaurants that are actually open. We already don't offer a brunch service on the weekends that we'd like to because I don't have anybody. Um, my husband's already working at minimum 16 hour days. Idaho's unemployment rate rose during the height of the pandemic. But as businesses open back up, Craig Shaw from the Idaho Department of Labor says that's causing a different issue. But we really have a, a, a job situation that's really similar to what it was before it started, which was very low unemployment rate. Uh, when we started, we were at 2.6% or 2.5 at the time, the rise to 2.6%. Uh, our unemployment rate for um, uh, January is 3.3% uh, for the state. So that means that we're still in that, or again, back to that uh, uh, tight labor force situation where it's just, you know, the, the number of employers and, and the, the good growth items have been experiencing has come with kind of this thing where uh, the supply of workers is just limited. So Back Hay says it's more to it than just low unemployment. Trouble number one, getting applicants uh, the, the labor, like people aren't responding. When they do respond, they don't answer phone calls, they don't answer emails, or they don't show up for interviews, which is now what's happened today. I was supposed to have two interviews, one of which hasn't shown up and the other is late. Mm. So that'll probably be another no-show. And man has a message to those looking for work. Just say, get out there, go for small businesses. We need hard workers. We need people who want to go the extra mile to make people's lives better because we all need each other right now. We're still in this together. So. All right, if you are currently looking for a job, they are out there. They're available if you want them. And the Idaho Department of Labor can help you out. They have more information on their website. Well, I guess you can call it the COVID rebound. The U.S. economy is on track to grow at its fastest pace in nearly 40 years. The International Monetary Fund predicts growth here in the United States will be around 6.4% this year. Coming up on CBS 2 News, emboldened smugglers are now taking to social media to encourage more people from Central America to come to the U.S. month. You know, uh, child sex abuse was up 17 percent in our state last year and combined Ada and Canyon counties investigated 272 cases. CBS 2's Arianna Piper tells us how we can help prevent what experts now call ACEs or adverse childhood experiences. Extreme adverse childhood experiences can, you know, absolutely um, impact neurodevelopment but that doesn't mean that we can't build resilience across our lifespan. So those positive childhood experiences really start to become protective. Jean Muchie, the West Treasure Valley Community Health Manager for St. Luke says, resilience can be learned. And the first step is learning your response to stress. Teaching kids um, how to fundamentally reset when they feel like, um, you know, the what's happening in their lives is just too much. Muchie says it's important for parents to help create positive experiences for their child. But if a child cannot rely on their parents, others can fill that role. A relationship with a trusted adult is really key. The evidence shows that that is a uh, one of those key positive experiences that can really change the trajectory for a child. Muchie says in order to help children heal from adverse childhood experiences, parents and trusted adults need to be involved in the child's life. Do they have teachers at school that they check in with regularly? Um, you know, what, what's happening in, in their, their social circle? 
where they feel like they've got some support, healthy support, but um, also just really parents checking in. Muchie says there are ways for anyone to help out children who are struggling, such as working with the Boys and Girls Club, Big Sister and Big Brother programs, as well as a mentoring program in Canyon County. They actually have mentors who connect with a child and, and they need to be consistent and stay with that child throughout much of their academic career, but they're that consistent, trusted adult for that child. Muchie says it's important these children understand they are not alone in their struggles. When we raise kids who understand um, that there's nothing wrong with them, that sometimes things happen to them, and then you know when, when they become adults and, and they can understand fundamentally that they're not broken, we create healthy communities where healthy kids can grow and thrive. Now, the CDC points out that there is a link between adverse childhood experiences and health conditions later in life. It's estimated that 1.9 million cases of heart disease and 21 million cases of depression could be the result of ACEs. Now, the Idaho Youth Ranch is raising awareness about child abuse. You can see blue pinwheels at each Idaho Youth Ranch location around the valley. They represent hope and also a plea for more programs to help and, uh, children who have been abused and to prevent that abuse in the first place. The nonprofit works with kids and families who have experienced childhood trauma. Coming up on CBS 2 News, Major League Baseball pulls its all-star game out of Houston to punish Georgia for its new voting law, but this debate is far from over. Plus, two men caught crossing the southern border, why they were wanted by the FBI.